Special thanks to Intuit TurboTax for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to what I guess is technically episode two of the new series that I'm doing, which is all about investing in real estate. I feel very fancy saying that it's not something that I am an expert in, and this is not really the normal type of video that I do on my channel, but I am really excited about this journey and I'm trying my best to kind of just take you guys along for the learning experience with me. So I wanted to do this video as kind of like a catch an introductory video, just, you know, kind of wrapping everything into one, hopefully somewhat quick video that can kind of help explain what I'm even doing. So if you're new here, or if you're confused, I mentioned in two previous videos that I am trying to get into investing in real estate. I'm trying to own investment properties. This is something that I have never done before. It's brand new to me, but it's something that I have been advised to do by people who are wiser than me and by my financial financial advisors. And I just think that now is the time. And you guys really seem to like the whole process when I was house hunting for the house that I live in and kind of the remodeling process that I've been going through with this house. And it's going to kind of sort of be the same thing with these investment properties. So I thought, why not take you guys along for this journey? And maybe you can learn something along the way too. But I know you guys probably have a lot of questions about it. And honestly, I did too. Again, I am not an expert, so please don't take anything I'm saying as advice or financial advice or anything like that. But I just kind of wanted to, like I said, give you guys a little intro to investment real estate. Investment real estate 101 with Raven Elise. <laughs> but first a word from our sponsor. Buying investment property is very scary to me because I don't know what I'm doing. This is all brand new to me. So it's very intimidating, but you know what else can be very intimidating? Doing your taxes. Maybe you're like me and you have a complicated tax situation. For me personally, I have multiple streams of income. So my tax situation situation is a tad bit more complicated than just a simple return. I know a lot of you might be in a similar situation. Maybe you're working multiple jobs, you have a full-time job and a side hustle, or maybe you're starting to do brand deals, but you're still working at a part-time job. Taxes might seem scary and no one wants to make mistakes. If you don't have an accountant or a whole finance team, who do you turn to to ask questions? Where do you even start? You don't have to worry because I recently learned about a really great resource that TurboTax offers called TurboTax Live Full Service. It matches you with a tax expert that can handle your unique tax situation so that you don't have to worry about getting all the deductions that you qualify for and you can be sure that your taxes will be filed correctly. TurboTax Live Full Service will take care of everything from start to finish. You can hand off your taxes to an expert and they will make sure that you get all of the deductions and credits that you qualify for and they can even sign and file for you so that you don't have to lift a single finger. So if TurboTax full service sounds like something that would be helpful for you, definitely check it out. I will have all of the info in the description box. So first things first, when it comes to these properties is, you know, what kind of property am I even looking for? This is my first real estate investment. So I'm kind of trying to start local, start small, I guess, in a sense. So I live in the Austin area, so I am looking for houses in the Austin area. And I have set my price range range from 400,000 to 500,000, which is a lot of money. However, the median price for houses in Austin right now is 465. And I know that might sound crazy, but it just is kind of crazy because prices have risen by like 25% over the last year and the prices are continuing to rise. So in order for me to kind of get the type of house that I want, that just is what it is. That just is the price range about 400 to 500 K. And I I am looking for single family homes, but also interested in like duplexes or fourplexes. I kind of want to start with a single family home just as like my first starter pack house. Cause I don't know, that just kind of sounds a little bit simpler. And I am looking for houses that do need a little bit of fixing up. I personally want a project. That's what's going to make it fun for me because I am interested in everything home related. I love the remodeling process, the design process, everything like that. 
but especially for my first or first few properties even i don't want to dive into anything that's too overwhelming or too scary because you know i am new to this so i'm sticking to houses that need cosmetic changes so things like you know changing the light fixtures changing the cabinets countertops painting the walls changing the flooring and not major things like knocking out walls or having to fix the foundation or completely redoing the plumbing you know what i mean but just kind of taking something that might be a little bit run down a little bit outdated and putting my own personal touch on it and making it super cute and desirable to live in i really like the idea of providing someone with a really cute place to live but yeah because of the fixer upper aspect of it this is not only just a you know like financial investment something that i need to do for wealth building but it's also something that i'm hoping will be like a fun hobby and be like a passion project and something i can be excited about and have fun with and express my creativity also when it comes to kind of deciding between a single family home or a duplex or a fourplex one of my financial advisors did advise me to stick to a single family home anyway just because they are easier to liquidate meaning that if you ever need to sell it and get your cash out of it it's easier to sell a single family home than it is to sell a duplex but because this is supposed to be like a long-term investment for me i'm not planning on needing to sell it right away so that shouldn't really be a problem but like i said just because it feels easier i'm kind of looking for a single family home for my first property and then maybe after that i will kind of expand into the whole duplex fourplex i might even get into commercial property you don't know and my financial advisor actually gave me a lot of really good advice i can't take credit for any of this information that i'm giving you guys one of the other really good pieces of advice that he gave me as far as when i'm looking for these houses is that the neighborhood is super important and the school district is extremely important and that's just because there's a lot of young families moving to austin and they're going to be picky about the type of neighborhood that they're living in and what school their kids are going to go to and since i'm wanting to do like the cute little single family home i have to be thinking about the type of people who are going to be renting from me and what they're going to want their surroundings to be even though the prices might be lower anything in a shady neighborhood is out and anything in a failing school district is also out my advisor also told me that it's better to stick to one story houses because there's less that can go wrong with a one story house stairs are a liability on me for accidents if there's water leaks on the second story and it drips down to the first story or something happens with a laundry room or a bathroom on the second story that can cause a huge problem versus if it was just on the first floor energy costs are also lower with single story homes and just overall a single story home is just less of a liability for me as the landlord and yes i said landlord which leads me into the next topic which i don't know if you guys have already picked up on it by now and i have already said it in you know my previous videos but the whole point of me buying these properties is to rent them out so it's not just buying them fixing them up and selling them which would be considered flipping a house i'm going to be buying them fixing them up and renting them out. So that's why, you know, these liabilities and these damages and these safety issues are more of an issue for me because I have to think about, you know, my renters. So no, I am not buying a bunch of houses to just have for myself as vacation homes. I am not moving. I am not flipping it, like I said, to just turn around and sell it. I am going to be renting them out. So you're probably wondering why I am deciding to buy these houses, fix them up and rent them out instead of just buying them them and selling them for like the immediate profit and that just kind of ties into this whole overall concept of having them be long-term investments and trying to just build wealth over a longer period of time also at this point in my life i have already maxed out my 401k yes you can have a 401k as a self-employed person and i do have one i also already have money in the stock market i already have you know over six months worth of savings savings as far as like my life expenses I already have savings stashed away I've invested in other ways such as you know investing in startup companies and things like that and then since on top of all that I am also living below my means that means that I have cash just sitting in a bank account that's just doing nothing most of you probably know that if you just have money sitting in a checkings account or a regular savings account you're making like the tiny 
tiniest little bit of interest on it. And essentially it's just sitting there. It's just sitting there. Your money is not working for you as they say. Because I've already kind of maxed out in a sense the other ways of investing that money and having it work for me, this is now kind of like the next thing, the next other thing that I can do with that money. Plus I am also in a high tax bracket. A very high percentage of my income goes to taxes. So in order to reduce the amount of taxes that I pay and be able to build wealth and have my money work for me, that leads me to investing in real estate. Okay, so let me just break it down with a little bit of an example and follow me y'all. Let's say I buy a $400,000 house and I put 20% down. 20% of 400,000 is 80,000. That same $80,000 would just be sitting in my checkers account doing nothing, acquiring 1% interest. Not even 1% actually. So I buy this house, I rent it out. The rent covers the monthly payments and the maintenance for the house, but over time the mortgage gets paid down and hopefully the house will appreciate. So what does that mean? That means I'm building equity in the house. And I don't personally need the income from the rent right now. I'm not trying to make a profit off of what my renters are paying for rent. So it's actually nice too, because I don't have to be that evil landlord who is charging a whole bunch extra for rent because I'm trying to make a profit. I can charge them a much more fair price for rent because I'm not necessarily trying to make a profit. I'm just trying to, like I said, offset the actual cost of the house and have it appreciate over time. But you know, like 30 years from now, the house will be paid off and then I will start making a profit off of the rent. So that $80,000 that I put down to buy this house actually ended up giving me something that I own that has been paid off and has appreciated over time. So now it's worth more than what I bought it for, hopefully. And in the meantime, everything that I put into the house, as far as fixing it up, remodeling, you know, new carpet, new cabinets, new windows, whatever I, you know, spend to put into the house, I get to write off on my taxes, which reduces the amount of taxes that I currently owe. And the hope is that after I get started with that first house, I will be able to purchase multiple houses so that I will end up with a whole portfolio of real estate. And that could be worth a few million dollars. So let's talk about the people who are helping me along the way, because I'm not doing this all by myself. Like I said, I am very new to this. I do not know what I'm doing. I have no experience and I am relying on on the experience of these people that I am so thankful for that I have been able to find them to help me through this process. Number one person is my mom, you know, my parents in general. You guys know I work very closely with my mom with almost everything that I do. Whether she is experienced in something or not, she's good at researching and she's just always by my side with any, you know, new project that I take on. So of course we have Chef Tony, you know, kind of guiding me along the way. You're gonna see her a lot in the videos in this series. The other main person is my realtor and my realtor is amazing amazing because he has a ton of experience. He has his own experience with buying and flipping houses. He's very familiar with the Austin market and I just think he is the perfect realtor for what I'm trying to do. Second person is a mortgage banker and the person that I'm working with is also very experienced with, you know, investing in real estate and things like that. So he was able to give me a lot of advice, not just about mortgages, you know, specifically, but about just this whole entire journey in general, because he has done it several times before himself. He has actually handled my parents' last two mortgages and he handled my mortgage for my current home. So he's somebody that I know, I trust, my parents know him and trust him. He always gives us, you know, good deals and great advice. We have more of a, a little bit more of a personal connection with this person, which is really helpful in situations like this. And the third person that I'm working with is a general contractor. And once again, I got super lucky to be connected with this person who has experience and exactly what I am trying to do because there's lots of different general contractors who kind of have specialties in certain types of projects, I guess. But this general contractor has, you know, flipped houses and they have a lot of connections as far as, you know, outsourcing the work that is going to need to be done on 
the house. They work with a team who knows how to get things done, get it done properly and get it done fast, which is exactly what I need because I have had my own experience with basically trying to act as my own general contractor for the remodeling that I've done around this house. I did not have a general contractor to act as that main person who is overseeing the whole team of people who are working on the house and actually doing the jobs. Since I didn't have that and kind of me and my mom were acting as that ourselves, we have had bad experiences with just not knowing who to hire, not knowing which people are going to do a good job and which people are going to screw us over. And I have gotten screwed over multiple times, as you have seen if you watch my home decor update videos. So actually working with a general contractor who knows who to hire to do the work is going to be so helpful. I know it's not gonna be perfect, happy rainbows, boom, boom, boom. At least I have people helping me, okay? So what happens next? First thing is to get pre-approved for a mortgage, which I actually just got pre-approved today as I'm filming this. And getting pre-approved is just really helpful for this current Austin market. Things are moving fast. The market is crazy. So if you see something you want, it's better to be pre-approved. That way you don't even have to worry about that. And then I just need to continue to work with my realtor to find the perfect property to start off with. If you guys saw my last video, you saw that I went house hunting. I did look at six houses in that video and there was like some eh, kind of contenders, but nothing that was really perfect. So I am still gonna have to look at several more houses before I find the perfect one that I actually want to move forward with. Once I find that house that I am really interested in, I will then bring my general contractor out to look at it with me so that we can kind of talk about the remodeling and they can advise me on kind of what they would recommend fixing or changing in the house. They'll be able to tell me what's actually doable, what's gonna be worth it as far as the budget and different things like that. And then from there, if it makes sense as far as you know what the house is going for and what the general contractor says about the amount of work and money I'm gonna have to put in to remodel it, then we move forward and we make an offer on the house. Then after I close on the house and it is mine, hopefully my general contractor and their team will be able to come in, do all of the fixes and changes and remodeling that I wanna do. And I will be overseeing everything personally. Like I said, that's kind of the, the part that I'm excited about. The part that I'm gonna be heavily involved in is like picking things out and designing it. And then once all of that is done and the house is all cute, I can put it on the market for rent. So once that happens and the house is officially being rented out, that means that I will have to have another person on the team, which is a property manager, because I'm gonna need somebody to you know oversee the property. If you guys have ever rented before, I'm sure a lot of you guys have. I definitely have rented at multiple places before. You have a property manager, someone that you're gonna go to when you have an issue, someone that you're kind of communicating back and forth with, someone who's just overseeing the property and things like that. And that could be me, but it's not gonna be me. I think my dad is actually going to play that role for me, at least as we kind of get started. Maybe eventually I will have to even hire multiple people if I have multiple properties, but my dad is, I think, qualified to play the role for now. He's actually retiring next year, so this is gonna kind of be his little thing <laughs> during retirement. And don't worry, I'm not forcing him into slave labor. I feel like anytime that I talk about like my family members or my friends like joining in on my you know business ventures, whether it be with what I do on YouTube or something like this, people are always like, why are you making your sister do that? Why are you making your mom do that? Why are you making your dad do that? I'm not making nobody do nothing, okay? I am a equal opportunity employer. <laughs> I treat my employees fairly, whether they are my own father or not, and I pay them fairly, and I always make sure that it is something that they actually want to be doing. And you know, I'm just lucky and I'm blessed to have family who likes me enough to, to do these things. But I swear, I don't want anybody to think that I'm like forcing my, my family to like help me with this type of stuff. Just wanted to put that out there because I get those comments sometimes. But I think it's kind of cool. Like it's a family affair. It's something that I can, you know, do with my family. You know, maybe we could all make a little money on the side. Who 
who, who else, who better? But yeah, that's pretty much the deal on what I am trying to do when it comes to investing in real estate. Once again, I am brand new to this. I do not know what I'm talking about, okay? This is a learning experience. This is a journey. I want you guys to follow me along on this journey and learn along with me. I think it'll be very interesting to say the least. I'm really excited about it. I'm kind of nervous about it, but mostly excited to kind of have a new passion, a new way to express my creativity and to be able to build wealth in a new way, which I'm very grateful to even be in this position, to even be able to do this in the first place. Like, it's really crazy. Like, as I'm sitting here filming this video, I'm like, who am I? And who's letting me do this? Like, do you ever have those moments where you feel like you still feel like you're 14 years old, but then you realize, actually, I'm almost 30 years old and I am now investing in real estate? Like, I am an adult. This feels like big girl business and I'm kind of scared, but hopefully you guys are excited. Hopefully you guys will join me on this journey and hopefully it goes well. Wish me luck and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Thanks again to Intuit TurboTax for sponsoring this video.